Hello guys, today I'm going to be bringing you guys a new series based on the Python scripting language. Uh, I decided to bring you guys this new series since I've been very limited to VB.net and ActionScript. Which brings me up to another note. Unfortunately, Adobe has discontinued AS2. Um, I know a lot of you guys follow my How to Create a Virtual World series, and that is all based off AS2, which kind of pisses me off that Adobe discontinued AS2, because not only are all my tutorials in AS2 so far, but I'm familiar with AS2, I know what it is, and I don't know anything about AS3, and they've completely cut off AS2 from existence, they've terminated its, its, uh, its use, so you can use it in the old ones, like if you have AS5.5 like I do, you can still use it, but in the new ones, uh, you can't use it. So basically, um, if you guys have a way of acquiring the old one and you guys want me to continue the series, uh, just leave a comment below. But if I don't get a lot of, um, you know, if I don't get a lot of requests for it or whatever, like, it's kind of useless because they're, you can't do AS2 anymore. But anyways, let's jump into the tutorial. So for Python, we're going to need two things. We're going to need Python for one. Uh, I personally recommend 2.75, is it? I think it's 2.72 or something like that. But anyways, I personally like that. The syntax is different. If you want to follow this tutorial, you're going to need to get that version. I'll put it in the description below when I remember it, as well as the link to Python. Um, and you're also going to want PyScriptor. I like 2.5. I just personally like Python 2.5. Now, when you open PyScriptor, it's not going to look like this. It's going to look like this for you. I just have a darker theme because I personally like darker themes. It's just my personal preference. And your syntax highlighting is going to be different than mine uh, because I have a custom one. If you guys want to see these, these will also be in the description below. So to create a Python module, we're going to go to File, New, Python Module. Now this is the script it generates. Now like every script, Python has its pros and its cons. Uh, one of its, a couple of its pros is that it's a powerful language. You can use it to make APIs. You can use it for a lot of different things, and it's just a and it's a pretty easy language to learn. But the problem is, is as you can see, there's no GUI interface for it. It has no built-in um, interface designer. So for like Visual Studio, for Visual Basic, C++, C Sharp, etc., it'll have a little software window you can resize, add controls, blah blah blah, go to the script, and you can add your stuff. This is not the case for Python. It's an interpreter and console-based language. However, you can design a GUI, you can get something called Easy GUI, and we're going to be working with that later on in the tutorial series. So anyways, um, like every language, every language has a comment code. So for, you know, VB, it's the apostrophe. For, you know, C++ and C Sharp, it's the double slash. Well, for Python, it's the pound symbol. And this is your header. You're not going to want to bother with this unless you're planning on distributing your script out um, in the public. Uh, if you do, you're going to put your name, purpose, author, blah, blah, blah. If you're not, it's just a waste of time. And if you want, you can put it under a GNU license. But anyways, let's get into the cons of Python. So one of the cons, uh, well, sorry, I already got into a con is that it has no GUI. And the second con is that it's very structured. It's a structured based script, which means, okay, let's say we took out these spaces before the pass. We have a, uh, a syntax error because it's trying to define it as its own definition because it's not part of the main block. Now, let's say we went back. It's now part of the main block. So it's very touchy that way. It's, uh, it's code-based. It's sorry, it's a block-based scripting language. So just take a look at this if statement. So if it was in VB, it would have if and then end if to declare the end of the if statement. In this, there's nothing to declare where the statement begins, where it ends. It's just all in the code block. So let's say we made another thing. This would be considered part of the if statement. This would not be considered part of the if statement. Okay. So let's say we made another if statement in here. If, uh, blah, 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 blah. It'll give me a syntax error because I'm just typing random things. But anyways, um, yeah, and if you type something else right here. This will not include it as part of the if statement. You need to tab it again, and this will put it in the if block. So anyways, so yeah, so those are the cons. Now, as you can see, it'll generate if underscore underscore name underscore underscore equals equals main. Uh, we're just going to leave that. Uh, we don't need to touch that. And then main, 
and then it'll go to the main definition. You can change this. It's not a, an assembly thing or anything. You can change it if you wish. And anyway, uh, anyways, this pass basically means it'll skip past this definition and go to another one. And if there isn't another one, it'll terminate the program. So we're going to do a different uh, basic print script, kind of like a Hello World kind of thing. We're just going to do print and then um, Hello World. I don't know. Sure. And then we can do print Hello World. Now, as you can see, it will do the same output. But we're, we can use it two different ways. We can use it with two quotation marks or one quotation mark or a double quote or a single quote. Um, also, one thing I like about Python is it's not touchy with spaces. It's very lenient that way. You can put spaces or not. It won't matter. But anyway, so here it is. Now, the problem with this is let's say we wanted to put um, let's say we wanted to put an apostrophe S like Hello Worlds or something. Um, this wouldn't be proper. But let's say I wanted to put grammar in my program, and Hello Worlds, we wouldn't need an apostrophe. I'm just doing it for an example. But as you can see, Hello Worlds right here, this apostrophe doesn't interfere with it. It's fine. But in this, because it's only defined by a single apostrophe, and this is an apostrophe, it'll declare this at the end of what to print, and it'll cut off the S, and it'll give you a syntax error. So I just personally like to work with the double quotes. So now you can just save your module. I'm going to save it as tutorial.py. And you can go ahead and run it from your IDE. So if we go ahead and run it, as you can see in our interpreter, it'll say Hello World. Uh, or, yeah, I'm just going to remove that since it's not even proper. I just did that to show you guys. Um, Hello World. So there we go. So now I'm just going to do this for the sake of the tutorial. We'll get into this later. I'm not uh, showing you guys really what to do here right now. But I'm just going to import time just so I can show you guys how to run it from the console. That way it doesn't close right away. I'm going to make it sleep for 10 seconds. So now you can also run it through the um, Python terminal. So you can just double click on it. And as you can see, it'll bring it through python.exe. It looks very similar to command prompt. And it, it is essentially, but for Python. And as you can see, it displays hello world. So I hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, please leave a like below. Comment any questions or comments you have on the video. And subscribe while we bring you guys more of these tutorials. Uh, possibly another one in this series later on tonight, depending if I have the time. And yeah, so I'll see you guys later.